Today I'd like to share with you some thoughts about using the Cow-Calf Share Lease Calculator Spreadsheet as a tool for evaluating a fair cow-lease agreement. Why lease cows? That's a question that I frequently get asked and both from those who own the cows and from those who might like to take cows in on a lease arrangement. First is that cow-calf production generally requires a large amount of capital which can really be a challenge to beginning producers. By leasing cows, the operator can gain access to cows without having to purchase them, and from a capital outlay and cash flow standpoint, this can be an advantage. Cow leasing from a cow ownership standpoint allows them to maintain or phase out of ownership of cows without providing labor. As we look at the average age of ranchers today, of cow-calf producers, this can provide an attractive option, especially in light of today's current cattle prices where the cow-calf enterprise has been very profitable. Let's talk about the two options for leasing cows. First is what we call a cash lease, which is based on a cash arrangement where the cow owner gets paid a cash payment from the cow-calf operator, or a cow-calf share arrangement where both the cow owner and the person who's operating those cows or caring for them gets a share of the calf crop based on what each party contributes. Let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of a cash lease versus a cow-calf share arrangement. In a cash lease arrangement, the cow owner gets paid a set amount per pregnant female each year. The advantages of this is they have a known income, it's less risk to them, and it's simple to understand and they get a guaranteed payment. This payment can either come as half up front when the cows are leased and half at the end of the year, or it might be a situation where they get the cash at the end of the year, depending upon the arrangement they have with the cow-calf operator. The disadvantage to the cow owner is that they're going to get less income when calf prices are high, such as a year like this in 2014. The advantages of a cash lease arrangement to the operator is it simplifies payment for the cow owner's portion. They know what they're going to need to pay that cow owner each year. They can work that into a budget and plan that way. The disadvantages to them is that they are accepting all of the cow-calf price risk as well as the production risk and they must come up with the cash to pay the lease. In a cow-calf share arrangement, the cow owner gets an agreed upon portion of the calf crop. The advantage to the cow owner is that they can either sell or retain calves at weaning and this might be a particular advantage to them if there's genetics in that herd that they want to retain uh, keep those heifers in production and bring them back into the herd as an opportunity to perpetuate their cow investment. The disadvantage to the cow owner is that they're now participating in both production risk and price risk. And so that can be a negative if production uh, problems occur or if a price uh, wreck occurs, they're going to be standing risk with a cow-calf share arrangement. For the cow-calf operator, the advantage to them of a cow-calf share arrangement is they don't need to come up with cash to pay for lease of the cows. The disadvantage to them is that they have to give up a portion of that calf crop and that they might want to be retaining heifers uh, to keep for their own cow herd or to begin to build their own numbers. And if they have to give a significant portion of those to the cow owner, that could be a negative to them. The Calculator Cow-Calf Share Lease Decision Aid is an Excel spreadsheet that's available for download at the West Central uh, Research and Extension Center's website. Uh, you can see the address here up here on your screen. This Excel spreadsheet provides a detailed input analysis to determine what a fair share arrangement or cash lease should be. If you go to that website, you're going to see a web page pop up that looks something like this. You want to scroll down and look for the Cow-Calf Share Lease Calculator. When you click on that hyperlink there, what it will do is ask you if you will allow it to download an Excel spreadsheet. You want to go ahead and click Yes. Download that spreadsheet to your computer. When you open this spreadsheet, it will look something like this. So this is what the first part of the spreadsheet page looks like. And you can see up here that it breaks out a cow-calf share arrangement based on what each party contributes, 
or if you're looking at thinking about a strictly cash value where the only thing the cow owner provides is the cows and the bulls and just gets paid a cash payment you can see what that would look like as well this cash value includes depreciation death loss interest on capital investment and some insurance if the cow owner wants to take that out kind of looking at some of the inputs that go into this from a capital investment standpoint we want to think about what kind of interest rate to use and I used in this example 4% which is somewhere between what would you would get if you put money in the bank in a CD or in a money market account and also what it would take if you were going to go out and borrow the money uh, to purchase cows at today's current in interest rates I assumed 100 cows in this lease just to keep it simple we're going to have a 15% replacement rate, means we expect to bring 15 bred females, bred two-year-olds into the herd each year to replace non-pregnant cows, to replace old cows that leave the herd, to replace those that die or those we call for various other reasons. We're going to assume the average value of the cow in the herd is at $2,000. She's going to weigh 1,200 pounds when we sell her as a cold cow. We're going to expect a cold cow price of $110 per hundredweight. It's going to cost $30 per head to market her. We're going to expect a 2% death loss each year. We're going to use four bulls or one bull for 25 cows for this particular scenario. We're going to expect we're going to replace one bull each year at a cost of $5,000. We're going to expect a bull, coal bull to have an average weight of $2,000 when he leaves the herd and expect to get $1.20 per pound or $120 per hundred weight. And you can see in this example that the cow owner is going to stand all of the expense from a cow ownership standpoint and also from owning the cows, or excuse me, also from owning the bulls. Now let's look at feed cost. In this particular example, the cow operator is providing all of the feed. And you can see here we have growing season grazing, dormant season grazing, corn stalk residue, hay, some distiller's grains we're using as a protein supplement, as well as salt and mineral. There's about 526, almost $527 of feed costs that the cow operator is providing in this scenario. Let's look at other cash cost. In this particular example, I said that this operator and the cow owner were looking at a share arrangement, and so they were gonna share the veterinary and medicine expense, the vaccine that would be used for those cows at preg check time, uh, also for those cows maybe in the spring for breeding, as well as for those calves when uh, they're going through that branding process and also through weaning. Cash costs on buildings and equipment. These are operating expense for the cow operator that are related to cow or related to ownership of his pickup, or maybe a tractor, a four-wheeler, working facilities, a livestock trailer, things that are related to the care of and just uh, management of the cow herd. If we look down there also, we don't want to forget about labor expense. It's really important that the cow operator include their labor expense as part of what they contribute to the cow-calf share arrangement. Frequently, when we think about someone who owns the cows, they don't pay themselves until after all the other expenses are paid. And we frequently refer to this as return to unpaid labor and management. But in this type of scenario, the cow-calf operator must charge themselves for labor because that's something they contribute to this arrangement. And so you can see as we look at expenses uh, through this part of the spreadsheet to this point, we have total operating cost of $825. Again, we're thinking about the cow owner's con contribution and the cow-calf operator's contribution. To this point, the cow-calf operator has contributed most of the expense. Now let's look at cow and bull ownership of cost. Again, remember in this arrangement the cow owner is providing both the bulls and the cows. And so this part of the spreadsheet shows that they have 100% of the ownership there and we're tiling up their expense that they contribute from a cow depreciation, cow death loss, interest on those cows, some return on that capital investment they have, bull depreciation, bull death loss, as well as interest on capital investment in the bulls. So total ownership cost 
is $256. If we were looking at a strictly a cow share arrangement, excuse me, a cow lease arrangement where the owner wanted to get paid for their capital investment, depreciation, and interest, this would be a value we're looking at. Then that owner is going to, in this cow calf share arrangement, assume that we're going to give him $5 of management uh, expense related to ownership of those cows, $5 per head. So total cost is $1,087. The cow owner contributing 25% of the investment in the production of that calf. The cow operator investing about 75% or $812. So what are some of the keys that drive a cow owner's value or a cow's owner's contribution? Well, cow value is a big one. And as I look at this spreadsheet, as we look at different scenarios, the value you place on the cow is extremely important in terms of how it works out in terms of what the cow ownership portion should be, either on a cow-calf share arrangement or on a strictly a cash value. The replacement rate is another big driver. As we up that replacement rate, it's going to drive higher that cow owner's uh, portion in terms of percent that they should get because they're going to have greater capital investment needing to replace those cows more rapidly. Interest rate is another one that drives this value. If you increase that interest rate, especially from a cow owner standpoint, that means they should get a larger portion of that. On the other hand, if you drop that interest rate, if that cow owner maybe is willing to take a 2% return on their investment rather than a 4% return, that's going to reduce the contribution that they contribute to that cow-calf share or cash value. Cold cow value and bull value are two other values that really can drive this arrangement or that cash value depending on what those value of those cows are when they're cold as well as what you include for bull coal value and also bull cost when you go out and purchase that bull to use him in breeding for the herd. Some of the real key values for the operator is feed cost. If you look at what that cow operator contributes, when we look at feed cost today, especially in Nebraska, we've seen some real dramatic increases, especially in pasture or range values. This can really drive their portion of what they should get in terms of a cow-calf share arrangement. When you look at the overheads, equipment and labor, you, from a cal operator standpoint, they have to make sure that they calculate these accurately. If you can operate a low overhead operation and reduce your equipment cost, uh, maybe your labor cost if you're running more cows, that's going to also affect what you should get uh, from a cow-calf share arrangement. And then also this bull expense. Who owns the bulls? Who cares for the bulls? Drives, in a big part, the cow-calf share arrangement. Here are some key things to consider if you're thinking about a cow arrangement. First is the integrity of both parties. You obviously have to work with people you can trust. Second, both parties need to recognize a win-win is needed if this is going to be a long-term arrangement that works for both. If you're going to have a lender involved, either from a cow owner or cow-calf share arrangement with the cow operator, that person needs to know what's taking place and be clear on what the expectations are. A cow-calf share and excuse me cow-calf care needs to be discussed in terms of sickness who the consulting veterinarian is going to be, how will sickness and death loss be handled, what's an acceptable cow breed up and if that breed up doesn't occur how will that be handled, how will hauling and marketing expenses be shared or who how will those be handled both for the cow owner and the cow-calf operator and then I think looking at what's expected in terms of results in both the best case and worst case scenario. And then also I think it's important to have an exit plan. At what point in time this arrangement determines that that should be dissolved, how will that occur, how will notification occur, and then also I think it's critical to put the agreement in writing. Uh, this is a scenario where it's important that both parties are clear on what the expectations are so that there's not any disagreements around what was agreed to and putting that in writing can really bring some clarity to that. In conclusion, here's some additional resources from the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension that can be helpful in setting up a cow-calf share or a cow lease agreement. Finally, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me either by email or phone. We'll be happy to work through this spreadsheet 
and also just discuss with you any questions you might have about a cow-calf share or a cow-calf lease agreement.